How's it going, my Power Addicts crew? Today on the Jeep Cherokee XJ Camper Build, we're going to remove the rear seats and some trim and show you how to get the seat belts out. Well, sort of. So, the first thing we're going to do is, yeah, mm -hmm, I'm vacuuming this mess out. For real, people. Ooh. Look what I unburied. Here's the jack. Anyway, you take that off, lift that bracket up, and it comes out. But I'll be back in a minute. You ever want to just throw away everything that you pull out, but then you just think, you know, that's still good. I can use it for something. So I'm going to hang on to that for now. Never know what I might make out of it. Once you get that thumb screw out, this right here lifts up, and you just take a lift everything out of there. What we got under here? Part of the wiring harness. Jack handle. I feel like I need to be wearing hazmat. So the next thing we're taking out, right there. Now to take the seat out of an XJ, take your hand, pull up on that lever right there, but you want to kind of support some of the weight to loosen it up. Right there. Ta-da! Lift that out of the way to the other side. Get that one out. Since you got that side over there unlocked, pick it up a little bit, slide it over. Because right there, it just rides on that pin that goes back to the side of a hole right there. Super simple. Unclip that in. Seat goes that way or this way. Whatever. So to recap, push the button. Unlock it. Pull it out of the hole. And take it out of the Jeep. Then work that rascal out of there, which I'm going to have fun because I got the house right there. And I got rust bucket behind me. So yeah, this is about to be interesting. I'll just pick it up bringing out the back side. How's that? Now for the backrest part of the back seat, grab that lever. Pull it forward. The whole seat comes forward. And you got that area right there, you can lay out flat. Yeah, if you didn't have junk in the way. So now you gotta get us a wrench. Take them bolts out right there. 15 millimeter, take them out. Look at there, poor little feller. You know, if I was smart, I'd get my ratchet wrench, it'd be a lot faster. Then you grab hold of it, and I'm going to lift that sucker out of there. No, you're not. you got these little loops right here. you got to get your seat belts pulled in through. Then you get that over there, and that should be able to pull the seat out. So now we got to remove this, 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 that over there. What do you use? T50 Torx, and I'm going to use my breaker bar to get them broken loose, and I'll switch over the ratchet. So as I expected, those bolts are being a bear coming out. So I'm not going to fool with them at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and pull this section of carpet out right here. I made them just cut the heads off of the bolts because I just ain't dealing with it. Uh, so, yeah. So, just get reached back in down inside there, grab a hold of the edge of the carpet, pull it up, and split the carpet right here because I don't have the seat belt out of the way. And he is stuck to the carpet, so he ain't going nowhere. So, go over and pull that mess up and cut it right there so I can pull it around the seat belt. Because that's just a hole right there, right here is where I'm splitting it, right through there. I'll cut that back like that, insulation back. That'll allow the seat belt to go through there and maybe pull the carpet out. Okay, got that pulled out. I'll cut these heads, these bolts off later. So I ain't dealing with it. Eight millimeter, take these off because what they'll allow is for you to be able to move this right here because this comes down and it's holding the carpet here. So, eight millimeter, take them out. And once you get that plate off, pull it out like that right there, good to go. Now as for that plate right there, it moves back inside there. So I'm going to take it out for now, but I'm not going to trash it because I may just think, hey, I might mount something right there. So, yep. So once you get that top section off, this right here simply just pull back this way, rotate it up, and pop dry it out. Now as for the carpet, got these little body clips right there. I took a screwdriver, put it underneath the head of that, pick that right there up, pull it out. And you see, it takes the carpet loose from that uh, sheet metal right there. And we got the wiring harness run underneath here, but we're going to deal with that later, as I said in my past video. So now, take this side off so I can move this out of the way to do carpet. Even if it means cutting it all out, I'm getting as much carpet as I possibly can out of this rig. Tomorrow's trash day. I want it gone. And at the bottom here, you got a Phillips head screw. Take that out. 
And this piece right here, tilt it up, slide back. Ta da! Out the way it goes. So here we are, we got the back seat completely out and carpet gone for the most part. And need to dig out some more trash so I can finish taking the front seats out. The seat belts, those bolts are totally just not wanting to come out, so I'm just gonna cut the head off them suckers anyways, and not a big deal. Part of me wants to cut the webbing on this right here and make like those uh, things you hang by your door, you snap your keys in or something. Y'all give me some ideas what I can make with these. I'm not gonna cut the webbing just quite yet. Uh, they're not very good shape, so they're not really what you call usable, because they're frayed so bad. But give me some ideas of what I can make with the seat belts, make, and maybe make a cool video or something. Because we got two of them on this right here. And then, of course, this one, and this got the retractor up inside there. So y'all give me some ideas that would be cool to make with these. Something in the shop. I mean, say, for instance, using this right here and make a loop to hold a air hose hanger, you know, or stitch a cord hanger or something. Just clip it up inside this here, hang it from the wall. I mean, just some random stuff. Y'all give me some ideas. Now, when it comes time to start framing this out, I'm not 100% sure yet if I'm going to leave this in yet because this was just there to support the seat whenever it dropped down to, you know, lay out flat and everything. That's kind of what that was for. Uh, do I cut it out? Do I not? I'm not 100% sure yet because it can be used for my framework to come off here and just brainstorming at the moment. I'm thinking here, this surface here, the mattress will lay on it. You know, maybe, of course, I'm going to try to put some sound dead in there or something back here to try to, you know, quiet this thing down to make it comfortable inside of it while we're sleeping. But also, um, coming off this, and if it come out level, it's going to create a lot of space underneath this. Maybe using that for some more, uh, more support for the uh, framework. I'm thinking I'm going to use one-inch tubing or I'm going to go get some um, not really heavy gauge angle iron so I can't frame that up. I'd rather build it out of metal. And weld it together then use uh wood or something like that because wood just doesn't last as far as the strength and so if i come off flush right here bring it out i'm gonna have all the space underneath here so i'm gonna try to figure out some way to create storage underneath that that's another perk to using metal framework is that wood takes up so much more bulk that it take up a lot of the room underneath the framework right there to you know create for storage or something again i'm brainstorming it there's the XJ back seats, getting ready for the scrap. There's my trim, I'm keeping, because wherever my mattress falls at, if this falls like right along here, the top of it, whatever, uh, I want my XJ trim in place to cover up all the bare metal and keep it looking XJ-ish. And of course, I'm keeping all my door panels intact, keeping all my electric switches intact, because I actually want power windows. I'm gonna wire all this up to where it's gonna be a common 12 volt source for all my doors, so I wake up in the middle of the night, oh, I'd like to roll down the windows a little bit, have some fresh air, and be done. So another brainstorming idea, and I really like it when you guys reply back in the comments. It helps me kind of figure out how I'm going to build this. I'm dropping some brainstorming thoughts inside there, because oftentimes down in the comments, you guys reply back with some really cool suggestions. Like my buddy Jerry, who used to live next door here, he chimed in the comments with a really great suggestion. Then, of course, you know, he living next door, we got each other's numbers, so we're texting back and forth, talking about some things. And... Um, he brought up the idea of using like one of those uh, camper stoves, the propane camper stoves, and then maybe store the propane tank up front somewhere, you know, whenever I cut the doghouse back, but have some form of um, outside kitchen. So with that idea, I don't know how tall it is. He's supposed to give me some dimensions off his. Uh, so if I was to build this up, let's say about this tall, I don't know, 18 inches, whatever it takes to clear the, pull out a stove, then maybe right here, grab this, pull it out, and I'll have an outside kitchen. What do you think? But I'll have to get some dimensions off that stove to really figure out you know, what space I got here. Then run my propane lines, where to set the tank up at, and all that kind of fun stuff. So down in the comments, drop a few suggestions of what you guys think. And he also mentioned when he and I was texting back and forth, is build some kind of bracket coming off the hatch right here, and have the TV drop down right here. So head of the bed be right there, and just have a TV right here. And he used to put like a 120 volt uh, inverter in here to power that up with. The thing of it is, I've already done a lot of research on TVs and projectors and stuff like that. And I know they make TVs for RVs that run off of a 12 volt system. So it'd be super easy to drop a you know, TV in up here and have a, they even make them with DVD players built into them. So if I go the TV route instead of the projector route, 
I mean, I know I've got that option, and they're not too crazy expensive. I think I've seen a 32 inch or something like that, and it really wasn't all that expensive. So building a, some form of bracketry coming off the framework right here to hang the TV by. It'll be hanging like right along in this neck of the woods. And of course, the head of the bed being right there, look at the TV. I think it'll work out pretty good. Plus, speakers are right here. So me being the audio video file that I like to be, that would kind of set that stage of the sound being right there with the TV, so that'd be a great idea. And also I also mentioned my first video by using a projector, and they make projectors now that are really, really short range. I mean, you can get down to like eight feet or less or something like that. I forget exactly what the range was. I looked it up on Amazon, but nonetheless, you know, they make them with a really, really short range, so it'd work inside of a small, confined area like this. And the reason I thought about going with a projector is the fact that you know, I can project it onto a screen side here, be really cool, but the thing with it is, I've got, I can control my light inside this area here. Let's say if you're in a state park or something like that, and they got a lot of street lights around you or something like that, that light pollution will not do good for the TV screen or the projector screen, seeing it. Uh, also, bright moonlight or something like that, so that could be an issue as well. So, again, brainstorming. You guys tell me your experiences with what you've, with equipment you've had to help me build this thing. I've never built anything like this, and I'm having a ton of fun tearing this thing apart. Um, I'll have the seats out probably tomorrow, uh, then we'll start on the dash, and then we'll clean up the interior and everything, because this thing inside of this thing is just nasty. It's got a lot of areas that needs to de-rusted, and once I get that rust out, I'm gonna take either get some like sound deadener or maybe bed liner or something like that to seal all that back up. Then I'm going to need to drop the gas tank out of it and start getting ready to pull the engine transmission transfer case and all that fun stuff. So still quite a few videos to be made on this. So with that being said, I'm definitely going to make the video on how to pull the transfer case transmission. Definitely going to make videos on how to pull the engine out of it, how to pull the fenders off of it and all that kind of stuff. So I'm definitely going to make the videos on how to pull the dash out of it and to pull the radio and all that kind of fun stuff because that'll help a lot of people out there who own XJs who need to know stuff like that as I disassemble, if that makes any sense at all. I'm also going to uh, create the videos on how to pull the engine out of it. I'm not going to cut the wiring harness on this thing. There's some damaged places on this harness where the previous owner's husband jacked some stuff up. Uh, unfortunately, that's the reason I kind of end up taking this thing the route I am because I was going to make a driver out of it. But come to find out the engine's shot. It's just got issues. I'm going to keep the engine transmission and transfer case. The engine I've got... I'm either going to use this engine or another one I have, one of the two. I'm going to do something really weird and off the wall with it, but it's going to be educational for you guys. Transmission transfer case, I'm keeping it because if I ever want to convert my YJ over to automatic, I'll have that ready to go. I, 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 so you caught me. You're going to say you can't put an XJ transfer case in a YJ. Actually, yes, you can because that one has an XJ transmission and transfer case in it. What you gotta do is you've got to reclock the transfer case. XJ's hang down like this right here. YJ's sit flat. So you gotta reclock the transfer case upward like this to put them in. So out there in the uh, Jeep forums that I see on Facebook groups and stuff, people who want a transmission for their YJ, I can't find one for the YJ. I can't find, and I understand that. To find one for a YJ is like needle and haystack type thing, you know? But, go to the junkyard, pull an XJ, it'll work. And I actually have videos to prove that. Now convert a six shift YJ to an automatic YJ using XJ parts. This particular XJ has the four speed automatic in it, which means it's got a computer that runs the transmission. So you gotta be sure you get all that whenever you pull the transmission out of it. And don't hack the wiring harness. But we'll catch all those videos way on down the road. Now as I mentioned, I was gonna cut these out because I'm just not gonna deal with that bolt being stuck. So, moving back over to the side. And these are my favorite blades in the world, people. Four and a half inch angle grinder with the Linux Metal Max blades. These things rock. Super tough. They don't explode like those abrasive blades do. And they cut very, very well. So I'm gonna get right underneath that right there, cut that head of the bolt right on off.
just like that. So everyone, as I said earlier in the video, if you guys got any kind of recommendation, comments, or suggestions of whatever, of how to build this thing, what equipment I should use, or you've seen what's been done before and what they did, drop them in the comments. Now, if anyone happens to have any pictures of any of these modifications or suggestions or comments you guys are telling me about, head on over to Instagram. I'll drop a link right here. You guys tag me in some pictures and show them to me, okay? Now, if you've enjoyed this video or this video series, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss any of them. Peace out. Later, y'all.